Hello, welcome back to the second part of my presentation. Uh, the place where we left is the three principles of the Pernod Malik scheme. Um, this is the analysis of result of Pernod Malik scheme, uh, where we see that uh, there is a noisy image of Lena, which has been used for blurring. The figure two over here uses the value of function constant 20, gamma 0 0.7, and it uses 10 iterations. Where figure three at the bottom, it uses uh, the same parameters at the top one, except the value of case kept 40 over here. So we see we get a, like a more smoother and less noisy version of the image. So the next uh, important thing about the single defocus image is the reverse heat equation. So reverse heat equation is basically indirect method for plot estimation, and it's given as the equation uh, on the screen. It essentially recovers the original image from its blur version. And the amount of time required to restore the image is directly proportional to the amount of blur for a particular pixel block. So this can be used for estimating the depth. So the partial derivative for the reverse equation is given over here. An additional um, function, beta, has been used over here. Beta is a function of the spatial coordinate x and y, which is uh, equals to 1 if the difference between del u and uh, average del u is less than phi. Uh, phi is uh, kept um, as a value of 0 0.2 to 4 is a constant and del u is a function of um, the coordinate x and y and the bar del u is basically the average gradient. So this is a simulation, this uh, slide is about the simulation results and observations. Uh, uh, the code was developed in MATLAB uh, to see the effect of reverse equation and as for inter inference over here the darker pixels represents the objects closer to the camera and the lighter pixels refers to the objects farther away from the camera. So in the left image we have uh, we have some uh, pattern and we have three box blurs over here. We did it intentionally and then we applied the reverse e equation with along with the paranormal scheme and we see that um, the, the blurred part are, um, um, are converted to white pixels and the uh, but it's not blurred, it's converted to dark pixels, which is, uh, according to the inference, absolutely correct. So our um, algorithm works for this um, ideal scenario. Let's see what happens with, if, when you use it for a real-life case. So there uh, I have used two images. The first one is a birdcage. If you see, uh, the birdcage is closer to the camera and the background is really far. And the result of this image, we can see that the darker images the darker pixels uh, are being captured uh, on the cage and the less um, dark, I mean, the light images are captured for the backgrounds. That means um, this uh, algorithm has been able to successfully detect the objects closer uh, to the camera. Uh, for the second image, we have used uh, a more constrained uh, blur image of a portrait of a girl. Um, same scenario over here. Uh, if you see that the portrait of a girl the only the girl itself extracting from the background is closer to the camera so it has directed with darker pixels and the rest of the background is decoded as um, uh, light pixels the next we move on to the uh, topic of stereo vision so the concept of stereo vision is that the human eye send to the brain identical images of a site captured from two nearby adjacent points and the substances are basically separated in depth from the viewer's standpoint, so the respective positions of the object snapshots will agree differently to the viewer's eyes. The human brain is cognizant enough of this disparity in image, and it proceeds by the eyes and brain can estimate the depth by measuring the disparity. So basically, there are three steps for involved in quantifying the stereo disparity. One is the extraction of the image from a specific location of a surface. Another image should be able to identify the same surface location taking these two uh, identical image points and disparity can be measured. So this is the um, concept of stereo photography. Stereo photography is the source of the stereo vision image pairs. So this is what uh, the, this uh, uh, figure over here defines the top view of stereo photography setup. Here we have two cameras. One is a left eye camera and the right eye camera. They are separated by distance of camera separation. It should be ideally 120th of the point that the imaginary rays from the left camera and the right cameras meet up over here. If you see, this is the point that the imaginary rays are intercepting. So we have this, we have to have a really precise value of this camera 
rotation angle for both the cameras and this value it should be also predetermined and uh, we see that the objects that are um, uh, before this intersection point will appear in front of the projection plane and the objects that are after this intersection point will will appear behind the projection plane so this is the one dimensional stereo vision setup geometry for the stereo photography that we saw in the last image uh, over here we have a coordinate system um, universal coordinate system at zero over here mm -hmm. and then we have um, um, two cameras which is CL this is the left camera and the right camera and their corresponding uh, coordinates over here and the imaginary rays intersect at the point W and um, where we can see that if we extend this imaginary rays they uh, intercept into a point for each camera the left camera is PL the for right camera is PR these are known as the projection plane so uh, from the mathematics over here if we figure out uh, a simple mathematics a simple geometry uh, this is the X coordinate of the left camera this is the X coordinate of the right camera similarly we can find out for the Y coordinates and uh, when we do the difference between the vertical coordinate axis we get the value disparity equals to the focal distance and um, into the distance between the cameras divided by the depth so if we transform this uh, we should play with this equation we get that the depth is inversely proportional to d and f the value of f and b can be determined by the setup so the next topic is basically the uh, depth recovery from stereo vision and using the image correspondence which is for a particular pixel in one image in this case the left image the corresponding pixel in the right image has to be figured out so this process is also uh, constrained by a few parameters over here so first of all the disparity measurement is an un unsigned unit it has no signs at all it's positive always so where if one pixel in the left image is moved to a direction in the right picture all other corresponding pixels also have to be moved into the same directions so the photometric constant should also be followed in this case if you see that um, the image on the left side if it's moved by uh, on the x-axis the distance of D on the right hand side it should be the same that means it will follow the photometric uh, constraint the epipolar constant should be applied for this matching process where the displacement of pixels always have to be in the direction of line segments line segments attaching the two pinholes of the cameras so in this case uh, the epipolar constant has to be for the previous case on the y direction because our camera is positioned on the y axis over here so now we are going to discuss the result of the depth estimation for stereo image pair for simulation purpose to measure the accuracy of the depth we use matlab code over here and we have used two images one is a random generated dot pattern and one is a, a real stereo image of two of a single picture from two different cameras so for comparing uh, the particular point that the two cameras intercept we take a middle point consisting of three to three block of pixel for matching and then later we use interpolation for matching the rest of the points in the images uh, for inference over here, the uh, brighter pixels indicate the scene near to the camera and the dimmer pixels correspond to the side uh, farther from the camera. So this is the first image which is uh, a shuttle aircraft uh, which is flying and uh, this image was taken by a satellite uh, with uh, a left and a right camera. So the, on the background we have the uh, earth surface. So if you see the uh, figure 5B over here, we see the disparity. Uh, and the depth, uh, if we take the inverse of this parity, we get the depth where the wider pixels shows that the, that thing, that the aircraft is closer to the camera than the background of the earth. Over here, we used um, a random dot pattern image. Uh, the original image is given on the top left corner and then the right corner, which is shifted a part of it. And then we uh, ran the algorithm on these images to figure out um, that particular pixel block uh, so we see that it, it successfully determines the disparity and by taking the inverse we also can successfully decode the depth so this is the performance evaluation and comparison of the uh, two techniques over here so what we see that uh, none of the techniques are um, uh, totally perfect every every technique uh, all these two techniques have their own uh, disadvantage and drawbacks so let's start with the single defocused image so in this case echoing the image is not a big deal you don't have to uh, 
uh, put any extra effort because we can get it by a uh, single camera but the computational complexity and the time required to extract the blur is significantly high as it requires more processing power to estimate the depth and then the focus part of the objects are closer to the imaging system and blurred part of the image is further away which is a really weak assumption so these are the drawbacks of the single defocused image depth uh, depth estimation for the stereo vision image um, the uniform areas the problem is that the uniform areas with the color pixels can provide misleading values because they can't differentiate between the same uh, pixels the setup for stereo vision image is complex and expensive because you need two cameras and it has to be placed in uh, perfect rotation and perfect separation and if you fail to do that then it will uh, come to an unacceptable depth measurement results so successfully, uh, but the uh, good thing about the stereo vision image processing is that it successfully decodes the relative distance of the objects in the scene by measuring the pixel distance from a common reference point. So this is the conclusion. Uh, we uh, did a detailed analysis of both the uh, technique of depth recovery. We analyzed the theory. We did some code running. We did. We observed the results and we came up with some uh, interesting observations. We also uh, got a really good uh, comparison of the two techniques. So for our, we don't have much time, so let's just get go through the codes that we have over here. The first code over here is the paranormalic scheme, which is basically uh, it does the uh, anisotropic filtering. Uh, over here, you take a noisy image, and it will uh, remember these iterations, the stability constant, and the value of value of the k, the constant function. And when we uh, do the derivative kernels at the four directions, we do the convolution and the exponential function we apply for the along the C for the uh, heat uh, heat equation, and then we get the image, the desired blurred image. Uh, for single um, for single defocus image, we also have the uh, depth, uh, which we use the reverse heat equation to find out. I'm not going to go into details because of time, but uh, doing the some iterations and and some convolutions, we can get the depth easily from the from the code over here. Next, we're going to move on to the stereo image code. Uh, the stereo image first, we give two pictures over here: the right image and the left image. And uh, if it's a color image, we convert to RGB to gray. And for for our setup, we have used three um, pixel blocks over here and the size of W equals to five. And, and after some iteration and downsampling and rounding up, we can get both the depth and the disparity. The depth is given by this depth image over here, and we can find the disparity by taking the inverse of it. So this is the code explanation, and uh, this is all for my project. So thank you for listening. Uh, um, okay, thank you.